Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be talking about aspect oriented programming. It is also known as AOP in short. So without any further delay, let's start. The aspect oriented programming is just another programming paradigm similar to object oriented programming. Now before we deep dive into aspect oriented programming, let's try to understand couple of other programming paradigms in brief as well. Let me start with functional programming first. In case of functional programming, we think the solution in the form of functions. A function is designated to do a specific task and one function can call other functions also. And in the end, when all the functions or the final functions execution is complete, then we can say the program execution has been completed. The grouping of all those functions is known as a single program. So in case of functional programming, the solution is always thought in the form of functions. But this particular design is having a very big problem. When there is an increase in business logic and its complexity, it becomes very difficult to manage the functions as the number of functions and their relations also becomes more complex. How we can overcome this particular problem? So for that, we have another programming paradigm, which is object oriented programming. So most of us are already aware about what is uh, object oriented programming. So let's try to briefly discuss it. In case of object oriented programming, everything will be defined in the form of objects or classes. So what are objects and classes? Class we can say is a blueprint where we define what fields and what methods a particular object instance should have. And out of that particular template, we can create different number of objects. Every object will have their own set of member variables and methods. So what exactly are the member variables? Member variables represent the state of that particular object. Suppose we have a vehicle and it is having a member variables like speed, gear, uh, acceleration. All those fields are member variables and their particular value will be defining the state of that particular vehicle at that time. And methods actually depicts the behavior that particular object can have. So let's continue with that example of vehicle itself. So in case of vehicle class, we can have accelerate method that will define the behavior of accelerating the speed. Then we have uh, changing the gear as a method also that will update the member variables. But that method itself will be uh, depicted as a behavior of vehicle that it can shift the gears also. So by using this programming paradigm, we were able to contain the complexity problem up to a very high extent. Then what was the need of aspect oriented programming then? Let's try to understand it with an example. Suppose we have some common functionality of logging some information and we need to implement that in all the objects. So what we need to do, what we can do, we can write that particular piece of code for logging the information in all the objects. But if you see, that is a very poor design. So how we can refine it further? So for that, what we can do, we can create a separate logger class and whatever the logic we want to write for logging the information that can be put into that logger class in the log message method. And in our object one, two and three, we can have object of logger class and using that we can call the log message method and log the required information. So with that, we are able to achieve a little bit of modularity as well because logger method has been separated out from the business logic itself. But if you see still we have problems of tight coupling. Why? Because in object one, two and three, we will still have a code which will be calling the logger message method. So whenever anything needs to be changed, we have to change in all the three objects or all other objects wherever that reference is made. And also we can see that logger class, even though it's not any important class from the perspective of business logic, but still have more dependencies to it. So that will make your code more tightly coupled and less extensible. To overcome the problem of tight coupling, we can use cross-cutting concerns. So what exactly are the cross-cutting concerns? In every application, we will have some common functionalities which are required in all the other modules, but they do not have any much business value to them or there is no business logic impact on them. Those particular concerns are known as cross-cutting concerns. Logging, security and transactions are such cross-cutting concerns. Aspect oriented programming can be very helpful in implementing those cross cutting concerns in your application. Now let's try to understand with the same example that we have been looking at. 
Now we have again those three objects and we want to implement that common logging functionality, but we do not want to uh, either add code in all the objects or have a separate logging class. So how we can achieve it using aspect oriented programming to do that we need to create a logging aspect a logging aspect as of now you can uh, think of as a special class it is similar to the java classes but just think of it as a class with some special privileges so whatever logging message earlier we were writing in our logger class we will write it in the logging aspect itself so now the question is how that particular logic will be called on the call of any method in object 1 2 and 3 so to do that we have another term which is aspect configuration so in aspect configuration we will define when the logging aspect logic should be executed so suppose we have object 1 2 and 3 where we have different number of methods and for object 1 and 3 we want to execute some specific instructions before those methods are called so that configuration we can define in the aspect configuration and what logic we want to execute that can be defined in the logging aspect itself similar to the logging aspect the other aspects can be created and implemented separately we can have a security aspect or a transactional aspect as well and similarly their configuration will be done so in the beginning we have started with a specific set of problems now let's see if we are able to achieve the solution using aop now let's try to understand the first which is loosely coupled so here you can see we have separated out the cross-cutting concerns and now using aspect oriented programming the logging aspect is different and the business logic is completely free from any code which will be calling the aspect so that makes both of these components loosely coupled the second important point is customizable aspect configuration so as i have just discussed in the previous example if i want to execute a specific set of instructions before or after some methods in object 1 and 3 only i can define that in the aspect configuration similarly if i want to uh, do something else for the object 2 itself that also i can define in the aspect configuration so in a way we can customize the aspect configuration and we can decide what instructions to execute on call of which method so that makes it very much customizable the last benefit with that we are able to achieve using aop is managing the cross-cutting concerns so now you can see the aspects are different and separated out in the separate module so anything that we want to change in that we can do it in the aspect only without even touching anything in the business logic so with that we are able to achieve loose coupling customizable aspect configuration and managing the cross-cutting concerns separately now in the end briefly let's see how we can achieve the aspect oriented programming or how we can implement on the high level so to implement aspect oriented programming there are only two steps first one is writing the aspect so what exactly is writing the aspect it is the code that we want to uh, execute before or after the call of any other method so that will be written in aspect the second one is to define the configuration so once the code that we want to execute is written now we need to write in the configuration when that particular code will be executed so suppose there is a method of get user in one of the object and before that method is executed we want to log some information uh, in the logs so to do that we can use the before advice itself in the aspects and write our logic in the aspect and in the configuration we will write whenever this method is getting called before its execution call this particular method in the aspect and log the information do not worry about the implementation as of now because in our next tutorial we will have a complete hands-on where we will see how we can implement the aspect oriented programming for any application there we will be introduced to some more technical terms which are associated to aspect oriented programmings only like we have uh, advice join point and point cuts uh, that's it for the introduction video if something is not clear please do let me know or you can rewatch the video again in case of any suggestions or feedbacks please do write in the comment section till then thanks for watching see you next time